Hey everyone, and welcome to a brand new series where I show how to make a two-player tank game in Scratch. As you can see, it does a really cool zoom out here, and then it zooms in to the player one. And it'll even say player one here. And you can see that this setting is kind of like a nuclear wasteland. There's some broken down tanks in the background. There's like these nuclear barrels. You can use A and D to move your tank barrel. So as you can see here, I'm gonna go ahead and try to aim it. And then there's these two arrows down here. You can see that when we change it, it does a really cool animation. And this is the power of our shooting. So I'm gonna go ahead and set it to like, I don't know, let's do 75 and I press space. Boom, it zooms out and follows the bullet, and then it does a cool camera shake, and then it zooms in to the player two. The player two has their own power level, as you can see. I can move my barrel with the arrow keys, and then I will set the power, I don't know, to like 74. Boom, it shoots. Oh, that was actually really close. Then it zooms back into player one. Boom. Oh, and once I hit it, as you can see, it gets knocked back, which is really cool in my opinion. Now, this game isn't actually finished. I'm not really done coding it, so I just wanted to showcase the main stuff. If you're excited for this series, then make sure to hit that like button and consider subscribing. But anyway, let's get right into this tutorial. Okay, so I'm in a basically blank project with three sprites in it. Oh, I guess that makes it not blank. The first sprite's called Player 1, then Player 2, and then last but not least, Ground. In Player 1, I have three costumes. The very the first costume we have is called small. Then we have base, which is the bottom of the tank that I drew. Then I have barrel, which is like the thing you shoot out of. In player two, it's actually the exact same thing. And in player two, the very first costume we have is also small. Then the base, except the base has some red color on it. And then the barrel, which is identical. Last but not least, in the sprite ground, we have small. I have chunk zero, which is just a chunk of the ground. Chunk one is another chunk. Chunk two is another. Three, four, five, and then six. You can make however many you want. And and that will make how big the world is. And if you don't feel like making these sprites and costumes, then you can check the link in the description, and I'll have a project shared with all of the sprites and assets in here. Okay, so let's start by getting the base mechanics in. So our kind of game manager will be in the backdrop, because it's kind of a handy place to plop it in. So in the backdrop, let's add a wind green flag click, broadcast message, and go ahead and make a new one called reset, and then make sure you do wait. So that way it's timed correctly. Now, we need a few variables to make this all work. So let's make a for all sprite variable called scroll x. Then another for all sprite variable called scroll y. This is basically the position of the camera. Now, in the when I receive reset, we are going to go ahead and set scroll x and scroll y to zero. Now let's go ahead and add a forever loop in here and then a repeat until in there. Now, inside of this repeat until, it'll do it forever until this condition is met. And then once it is, it'll reset and loop back. For now, let's just go ahead and just do repeat until blank because you don't have to put anything there and do a new message called tick with a space and then a dash and name this player. Now, the reason I can just make it straight from here is because I'm using scratch add-ons, but if you don't have that, just click new message and then this pop-up will come in, make your message and click okay. So now we basically are broadcasting tick forever and ever. So now that we have the kind of loop together, click on to player one and add a when I receive reset, we need a variable called tank x. Go ahead and copy that, click OK, and make another for the sprite only variable called tank y. So now in the reset, let's set the tank x to zero and then the tank y to zero as well. Now we want to go ahead and do a go to block and do go to the tank x in a minus the scroll x and put that in the go to. Then duplicate this and do a go to tank y minus scroll y. Now this isn't going to do anything because it's not in the tick loop. So go ahead and do a when I receive tick players and now put that go to in there. Now you can see that our tank teleports to the middle once we start the game. Now let's make it to where we can actually zoom in and out as well. Make another for all sprite variable called camera zoom or just cam zoom for short. Now in the backdrops, go ahead and set that camera zoom to 100, which is going to be the default camera zoom. And now switch costume to the small, set the size to camera zoom, and then switch costume to base. Now you can see if we change the slider range to 0 to 1000, and make sure you double click it until it's a slider, you can see that we can actually zoom in and out using this slider thing. Now the issue is the positioning won't be correct because it has to depend on the size and not just its position. So to make this work, we want to go to tank x and take that times camera zoom divided by 100. And this is what that looks like. Make sure you copy it exactly, otherwise this won't work. Now duplicate this, replace that with tank y, and now you can see that really it looks like nothing changed. But 
if we go ahead and set the tank X to say negative 200 here and we zoom in, you can see that it's actually moving depending on its zoom, which looks really crazy right now. But once we make the background and everything else do it, it'll make sense why I wanted that. Now let's go ahead and make the barrel work as well. Let's go ahead and hide all these variables except camera zoom for now. When I receive reset, let's go ahead and just add a go to right here to zero zero show go to front and now we're going to create a clone of myself. Now, if we do this enough, it'll actually keep creating the clones. Let's go ahead and go into the stage and add another broadcast here. Make it called Clear Clones. And then make sure you do and wait. Let's put that right above the reset like that. Now, in the player one, let's go ahead and do when I receive clear clones, delete this clone in case we have any leftover clone. Now that we have this clone, we need to make it be the barrel. Now, the one issue is, is we have this switching to the base costume in the tick loop. So that means the clone will always look like the base which is not what we want so to change this make a variable and call it costume make sure it's for the sprite only now right here set the costume to base make sure you set it to whatever your costume name is so mine is base so we're going to set it to base we're going to switch costume to costume right there now when i start as a clone duplicate that costume and we're going to set the costume to barrel then we're going to go ahead and duplicate this and put it above there for now we're also going to set the rotation style to all around and set the rotation rotation style to left right in the tank base over here. So now you can see that if we start this, we have a barrel that pops up right here. But you can see that if we try to move it or anything, it's going to snap to the same position that the tank is, which isn't quite what we want. We want the barrel to have its own script. But when we do a broadcast, clones can receive it too. We need to make a variable that keeps track of if it's a clone or not. We make a variable for the sprite only called is clone like that. Now we're going to go ahead and set the is clone right here to false because this part is not the clone. But when I start as a clone, we want to set it to true. Now all we need to do in this tick loop, put an if else checking if the is clone is equal to true. So inside of here is the code we'll do for the clone. Inside of here is just the base. So we're going to go ahead and put the costume at the bottom so that way it zooms correctly. But the go to will be right here. And for testing, let's go ahead and say I am a clone right in here. If we go ahead and start the game, you can see that the tank bottom will move when we drag it. But the top won't. And it says I am a clone. What we want to do is go to the player one. But when we do that, it doesn't actually pop up. A little trick you need to do is go to another sprite and pull out a go to and then do player one and then pull that into player one and now we have a go to player one there you can see now that this will snap on to the tank now let's go ahead and make a block called turn barrel now you want to go ahead and add a colon and a input called right limit with a colon and then an actual input called right limit a label called left limit with a colon and then an actual input called left limit and if we click ok we can pull this block in here and it looks nice so now what we want to do is make this to where we can actually turn right to left. So we want to go ahead and make a new variable for the sprite only turn speed. Now we want to set that turn speed to pull out a key D pressed and then a key A pressed. And now what we want to do is put a minus like so. Now you can see that when we're not pressing anything, it's zero. When we press A, it's one and D negative one. Now to make it slower, let's divide that by 1.3. Now we want to go ahead and set that right there. And instead of setting, we want it to change. Underneath this go to, we want to turn 15 degrees and change this to turn speed degrees. You can see now that this barrel will turn when we press A and D, but it can get going really, really fast. Let's add some friction to it. Add a set turn speed to turn speed times a number less than one. So for me, I'm going to do 0.65. You can see now that we move it a little slower and when we let go, it'll actually stop. Now, another thing you may notice is that it's rotating nicely and that is because we offset it. You can see that this is a center. So make sure you offset it a bit to make it turn correctly. Otherwise, it will look like this. That doesn't look very good. Now, there's another issue. We can actually turn 360 degrees, which is not correct. So that's what we need these limits for. We want to go ahead and add an if statement checking if the direction is greater than the right limit. Duplicate this and now check if the direction is less than the left limit. And then we can pull this set turn speed underneath there. That way it's all kind of contained in this block. Now we want to, if it's over the right limit, we want to change turn speed by right limit minus 
times the direction, then divide that by two, and then duplicate this for the left side, just do left limit instead of the right limit. So if we go ahead and test this out, you can see that it doesn't actually work anymore because we haven't set the right and left limit. So on the right limit, I want it to stop at 90 degrees. So I will do 90 and the left limit, I want it to be zero, which is perfectly up and down. So if I go ahead and do that, you can see now that we can move freely. But once we get to the left side, it kind of stops and does a nice bounce here. And because we've set everything up correctly, you can see that we can zoom in and out and the barrel will get bigger too. Now we need to go ahead and add a go backwards one layer right here. So now the barrel will always be behind the tank and that looks a lot better as well. Now as you can see, because we've set everything up, we start the game and say set the scroll X to, I don't know, negative 50. You can see that the tank will move and when we zoom in and out, it will zoom correctly. Now you can't really tell that we're actually moving the camera because nothing else actually moves with it. So here's how we're going to fix that. What you do is just pull every script from player one into player two. And I missed one of them. It was the tick one. And because all those variables are for the sprite only, it'll be independent. Now, once we start, you can see it's a little bit weird because they're on top of each other. In player one, let's set the tank X to negative 100. If we start now, they are separated. But what is going on here? The barrel goes to the first player. And that's because in the tick loop of player two, we have it going to player one. So what you want to do is get rid of that, go into player one, pull out a go to block, and then select player two. Now, if you pull that in here and put it right there, start the game, you can see that now they actually go to the right tanks. But the controls are the same for both of them. So in player two, change this D left arrow and the A to a right arrow. Now the controls are independent, but I actually flipped it. So flip the right and left arrows like that. Now the tank isn't facing the right direction. So let's go ahead and fix that. In player two, point in direction, negative 90 in the reset. And in player one, point in direction, 90. Now you can see that for the tank one, it all worked. But for tank two, we can't actually face the left side. And that's because we have the limit set incorrectly for player two. So in player two, the right limit will be zero and the left limit will be negative 90. So let's test this. Player one still works and player two now has a correct limit. So look at that. We can't go past like so. Now the layering is slightly incorrect. So in the player two, take out this go to front and just do a go forward one layer and then do the same exact thing in the player one. And now as you can see, it still doesn't quite work. So maybe try go backwards one layer. As you can see here, that's working a bit better. Make sure you change it in the other one. And once you do go backwards one layer in both of them, as you can see, the layering is now correct. And if we use a zoom in, it'll actually change the position depending on the zoom. And the very last thing we need to do is also make the ground move around with us. So go ahead and pull this tick players inside of here and change this to a new message called tick with the space dash and then ground. Now we want to go ahead and put this go to in there and then pull that like so. So as you can see, nothing's going to happen at all. And that is because we haven't broadcast a tick. So in the backdrop, go ahead and broadcast tick ground right here. So as soon as we do that, look at this. We can zoom in and out of the ground and that's awesome. Now let's also make sure in the ground here at a when I receive reset, let's go ahead and go to back and show. So now you can see that the layering is all correct. And when we zoom in and out, it actually looks correct. Now in the ground, we want to check if in the small camera zoom is greater than 100. And now you can see that we actually can zoom out, but the tanks cannot. And the reason is, is because the small sprite can't get any smaller when we zoom out. But you can see that the scrolling and everything is working correctly. So we'll fix the zooming next episode, but we have a fully functioning system for now that works. If we go ahead and change the scroll X by like 15, you can see the whole entire map moves. And if we zoom in and out, the zooming will still work because not only can we change the scroll X, we can also change, say the tank X by like five. And now the tank moves, but we can still zoom in and out. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you didn't, make sure to smash that like button and consider subscribing. But anyway, this has been Owen and I am out. Thank you.